Hello, since our last video we have had many exciting updates. So let's start with data engineering ones. First update, which everyone is talking about, is possibility finally to use loops inside Databricks workflows. So you, you, have, you have no longer to rely on Azure Data Factory, you can implement this logic in Databricks and you can loop through array of objects and from every element of that array to execute task. Uh, we have more information about this in my another video, so I'm encouraging you to watch it. And another update related to data engineering is related to Delta Life tables. So now it's possible to process slowly changing dimension from full reload of the data. For example, you can get snapshots like ones you can see here uh, in CSV file, for example, list of your customers. And then you can, in fact, transform them to something which is, which is incremental. So to slowly changing dimension based on that full snapshots. It's a really nice feature, a bit complicated, but for many use cases, it's really perfect. Another news related also to Delta Life tables, I really like that something is going on with Delta Life tables, is possibility to use liquid clustering. So that, uh, that, uh, Functionality cluster by is providing you liquid clustering. So finally it's available for data life tables. And another feature, which is now GA, is lakehouse monitoring. So it's a really nice solution to, uh, to use for detecting data drift in your data sets. For example, you can monitor time series uh, or whole snapshot of your data and based on that detect uh, data drift. I, I find it really useful for detecting data drift and it's finally GA, so general availability. Another feature which is now GA is possibility of using row filters and column masking. Uh, also for column masking it's now really easy to implement it using, you can use UI, you just select column, for example, the one with private data, PII data, and you select masking function like this, and you add it. It's really easy to add uh, column mask function, and we can see that it is already added. And when we check sample data, we can see that the name column is masked. Another update related more to administration of data platform is possibility to enforce policies. And it's a really nice update I will show you. So for example, we add that uh, to something to our policies, for example, that auto termination time is only five minutes, not 4,000 minutes, or number of workers is just one. And once we update the policy, we can go to compute and we can see that uh, that uh, cluster, which is here, is not comp not following compliance, and there is possibility to fix it. So it's really easy. Just you can fix it and uh, change the values to to the ones which are corresponding to new updated values of of the policy. Really useful functionality for that compliance is that you can use CLI or REST API uh, to monitor the compliance of your resources. And now there are new comments for that. So for, for example, policy compliance for cluster, there is also another one for job. And you can list uh, compliance of your policy and see that, for example, cluster of that ID is not compliant and you, for example, can implement some custom logic to send alert to user who is not compliant or automatically change that clusters. Uh, regarding CLI, there is also another interest API, another new uh, functionality, which is resource quotas monitoring. 
I think it's really useful for administrators because you can monitor your quotas inside workspace or inside Unity catalog and check uh, check uh, the limits and how close you are to to limits. So for example, there are some limits regarding the number of schemas or some other things. There are a lot of, of them. So it's really good to have this possibility to monitor uh, this using CLI. There is one more update regarding uh, administration of clusters. Now you can partially update cluster configuration uh, because before uh, it was uh, really frustrating that you had to pass whole cluster configuration. Now you can just update the a single paramet parameter, for example, number of workers, and just pass it to API, and that configuration uh, value will be only updated. This is really nice. Uh, now let's talk about updates related to AI and machine learning. The AI gateway is in public preview. Uh, the Strategy is that you will use uh, Databricks to govern all your AI models, not only the ones which are in Databricks, but you can you can manage models in a lot of different places like Amazon Bedrock or just Open AI, Vertex AI, and you can set a lot of a lot of, for example, configuration here. There are more will be coming, but for example, really nice is guard race. You can uh, block personal information data, or you can block certain keywords. Another options are related to, for example, limiting number of queries, which can, can be sent to AI. In fact, that queries are often really expensive. So you can limit that, for example, user can send one query per minute max uh, as a maximum. Uh, you can uh, also monitor monitor using of that models. And what is really nice and really popular is that you can use Playground then to, uh, to for that models which are under AI gateway. So this is the inter in interface like ChatGBT where use users in your company can use uh, machine learning models, also the external ones. Uh, but uh, that usage here will be like comp will uh, follow compliance to your company guidelines. For example, thanks to that guard lace. Uh, also, you can implement here something like function calling and a lot of different things. So it's a really nice update. And in future, these external models will be available in Unity catalog. So that AI gateway will be integrated with that. Another update related to machine learning is that Databricks started to publishing frameworks for a lot of use cases. And the really nice one is many model forecasting. Uh, this way you can, you have like ready interface to use uh, Spark with a lot of forecasting models. And after that, you can choose which one is the best for your use case. I really like that framework and that functionality. And another update is related to notebooks experience. Now we have a new slash commands for prompts. So for example, we can use that prettyfy comment or some others, others in in assistant. So let's let's check here in that notebook from DLT and let's prettyfy it. So you see that we can see here another comment as well, but we select prettyfy and click generate. And it's automatically uh, prettyfying your notebook yourself and make it like more pretty. Uh, Regarding to comments in notebook, uh, there is now the new comment, which is when you when you click Control Shift and P, 
you can see command palette and it can be really useful and it's uh, really similar to experience, for example, from Visual Studio that you can see all comments and you can search for them. Uh, I find it much more better than uh, digging in uh, in top menu or finding shortcuts for something. Uh, another update related to to notebooks, which I really like, is possibility of really easy embedding pictures. Uh, like for me, it's like surprise, but a lot of people really like to put some images on the top of notebooks, for example, with architecture and with some other other things. And now it's possible uh, just to drag and drop that pictures. So I will show you. Uh, here is the uh, photo and we can just drag and drop that photo here and will, it will be automatically embedded. Yeah, let's see. And it's embedded in our notebook and now it looks really pretty. And last but not least is that runtime 15.4 is now LTS. That's mean long time support. Uh, soon probably we'll see runtime 16. Now 15.4 is LTS. It was available in August, but now it's LTS. So you can start your migration to new runtime. And that's all for this month updates. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.